Hello, welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create some isometric designs and work with an isometric grid. The first thing you need to do is open up a new artboard. Today I've created an A4 landscape artboard. I'm just going to turn on my rulers as well because I like to have them on. So I'm going to hit Command R. It's just a shortcut for adding rulers. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a grid. And there's actually a fantastic tool in Adobe Illustrator underneath this tool here, the line segment tool. If you hold this down, you'll discover we have the rectangular grid tool. You select this. We're going to click on the artboard once with your mouse and up comes the rectangular grid tool options. In here, we'd like 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. 100 dividers horizontally and 0% skew and 100 vertical dividers and 0% skew and you can hit OK. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here and you'll see we have a grid which is fantastic. Now I'm just going to leave the lines as they are at the moment. We could adjust that later if we wanted to. Now the next thing that we need to do is change the scale of this grid but we only need to change it in one direction. So we're actually going to come here to our scale tool and select it. And with it selected and our grid selected, you can hit enter on the keyboard. And we'll notice this next dialog box pops up. Now we actually only want to change the vertical axis, not the horizontal. So inside this part, leave 100% at horizontal and at vertical, you need to type in the number 86.602. Fantastic, and we'll hit OK. The next step is to shear our object and there's a shear tool as well. So if you hold down the scale tool with your mouse, you'll find this tool here, the shear tool. We'd also like to have that selected and then hit return or enter on your keyboard. Now the shear angle that we would like to create is 30% and we can always preview that if you want to see what that's going to look like and hit OK. One more step and we'll have our grid ready to go and that is the rotate tool. So we'll click the rotate tool. We're going to hit return on our keyboard and up pops our rotate tool panel. This needs to be minus 30%. Okay, fabulous. We now have our isometric grid. There's a couple of things I'd like to do. Uh, for the sake of this, I might actually just make it a little bit bigger. I'll zoom out and we're holding down shift on my keyboard and also option at the same time. I'm just going to scale that up a bit now, depending on what sort of size things you'd like to make, you can decide how big you want your isometric grid to be. I'm actually going to pop this on another layer. So with this layer locked, I'm going to add a new layer on top and this will be the layer that I'm working on. I'm going to hit the stroke panel and pop it down to 25%. That just means it's just paired back a little bit. So back on my layers, I'm going to toggle on the lock. That just means as I'm working on layer two, uh, my isometric grid is not going to be moving around. Fabulous. So we can zoom in now. First, we'll be having a look at how to create an iPad style icon. And the next, we'll be having a look at how to create an Escher-esque kind of building. So we're going to use our pen tool for this. Have your pen tool selected. And I'm going to leave this as just the stroke, but I might change the color so it's just a little bit easier to see as I'm working. Now, I need to create a sort of a rectangle. So I'm going to start by using the grid and just tracking along it. I might make it a little bit bigger. And we'll just keep popping our lines down until we have the sort of shape that we're after. I might just flip that over so we can see what it looks like. Fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I think that that's basically about the size that we're wanting to go. But, you know, for the sake of having a look at how we could use the tools, I might just use um, the direct selection tool to show you how we could have made that a little bit wider. So what I'm doing is double clicking on this anchor in the corner so I can click and drag that out to map it back onto my grid and just make that a wider shape. And there we go. So I've made it slightly wider. Now the th next thing that I'd like to do is just round off the corners a little bit. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool. I've selected my shape and I'm going to drag in these corners just a touch. That's a little bit much. I might just push it back a little bit. Fantastic. So this is going to be the base of the iPad. I would like to now Command C or Control C and Command F to paste in front. Now I'm just going to change the color of this so you can see what I'm working on. And this top shape, I'm just going to drag up a little bit. I'm just holding down Shift because we're just sort of keeping it. Yeah, no, I'm pretty happy with that. So what I'm doing here is I'm layering up the shapes now. This will be the surface of the iPad. And this pink section here will be the depth or the form of our iPad. 
Now at the moment, these edges aren't quite sitting right. Let me zoom in so I can show you. What I'd like to do is just round this off a little bit so it looks a little bit more realistic. So what I've done is I've just used my direct selection tool to select the pink objects that, that is sitting behind and activate this anchor point and just kind of lift it up here until I'm happy with how this line is. I might pull that handle out of touch. You can see here it's just sort of blending in a little bit more than it was before. I'll zoom back out and go into do this one up here and again I'm just grabbing that anchor point and rounding off that corner just a touch. So now I have my top shape and my bottom shape to create the iPad. The next thing I'd like to create is a screen. So I'm going to come back and this time I'll use the grid again. I won't draw it, try and draw it on the top of this surface because I won't really be able to see how I'm working. I'll just use the grid and adjust it as I need to. So I'm just going to draw out another rectangle I meant this one and back and I'll just color this again just another bright color so I can see what I'm working on I'm bringing that over oh, I'm pretty happy with that but I think it just needs to be one section wider so I'll just hit command Z so I can use my direct selection tool and then I can just make this screen look just slightly wider there we go and again I'll just layer that and I might just nudge it, I'm just with my keyboard using the arrow keys, nudging that into place. Wonderful. So I have the base of my iPad, the surface of my iPad and the screen. The next thing I want to do is add a home button. So I might just zoom in for this so we can have a little bit of a closer look at the grid. I need an ellipse here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a little bit of a guide. And what I want to do is click and drag out an ellipse. I'm going to pretend that it's on the perspective of the angle and you see how I've tried to sort of keep move this into the middle so you can see I've just tried to keep the distance the same all around so it kind of looks like it's a circle but at an angle. Excellent so I'll just make that a different color again and I can sit that up on top of my iPad. Great! I might just also put in a little shape here, just a little rectangle, which will be our charging area. And I'll just use my pen tool for that. Again, I'm just going to use these lines just as a little guide, get a bit of a feel for it. And it doesn't matter, at, you know, at this stage if that's not as accurate as it could be. It's just a little extra bit. Okay, so there we go. We've got a bit of the icon happening. And the last thing that I'll do is I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow behind. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this pink shape, control copy, control B that pastes in the back. I'm just going to move it off to the side. I'm going to color it black and I'm going to knock the opacity right back. Make it maybe like 11%. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'm just going to turn off the grid so you can see how this is sitting. I'm still not quite happy with that shadow actually, so I might just convert it back to the grey that it was at opacity and let's make it a little bit more subtle. There we go. So we have made just a very simple icon of an iPad using the isometric grid. Now the next one we want to have a look at We'll switch our grid back on and we can just leave our iPad there. We'll lock it and pop a new layer on for us to work on. And we'll just move over to this side. We're going to start working on creating a sort of Escher-esque style building. And I'm going to create them so they're two grid spaces high. Again, I really just, really just like working in the bright colours so I can see what I'm doing. And we can always change that later. We're going to have the height will just be these vertical strokes. 
and then the horizontal strokes actually go along this angle which is our isometric. Now I've created the side of the shape I'm now going to create the top I'll pick another color for that so you can see here we go so this will be the top of our shape sorry I'll just change the color of that So what I have here is I have created a shape uh, which is a rectangle with a form but it's on the isometric um, angle here and what I might do is I might just use some of these colors that I have in the palette to create a little bit more of an effect there we go so I'll pop that away now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a, a building that sort of comes around and curves around on itself so I will speed this part of the video up but um, basically it's the same principles that we're, we've been working on where you're working to the grid and working with the side and the front and the top of objects. Here we go. Okay, so all I've done here is I've oh, I'll just changed the color of this part. So all I've done here is created a shape that comes around. It looks like it's going on the same plane, uh, and then it actually rises up and above, which is quite a fun little thing that you can do with this style drawing. The next thing I'd like to do is create a bit of a tower here, and then I'm also going to create some steps off the side. Okay, so now I have my shape, I have a bit of a tower. I'm going to create some stairs now and I'm going to use a slightly different technique. This way that we've been working so far has been sort of in this three dimensional space using the grid to help us draw out with a pen tool. But there's actually another way that you can work, turn that 2D vector into a 3D isometric drawing. What I'm going to do to show you that is make some stairs. So I'm just going to come over here to the side. So what I'm thinking of is I'm creating some stairs in the side view. I'm just holding down shift on my keyboard as I do this. Now I'm not keeping it to the grid. I'm just drawing out some stairs. So these won't be very accurate. You can spend longer doing that. So you can actually make sure that they're all, uh, you know, equal distance and length if that's what you would like. So I have my 2D shape. And the next step that I need to do is with this selected, I'm going to go up to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. Now within here, I'll just move this to the side so you can still see it, but you can see a preview of what we're working on. We can actually drop this position down to isometric and I'm going to choose isometric left to start with. And you can see this is actually taking this 3D vector form and turning it into an isometric style drawing that actually fits with the existing isometric grid that I have made. I'm going to take this extrude depth down here. Maybe we'll take it to about 20. Just see how that looks. That's too thin. Make it up a little bit. Let's put 40 in and see how that looks. Yeah, so that's about the size of the light. And I'll hit OK. So I'll just step back in so you can see how this will work. Now, as you can see, this is the green line here. That's the outside of the vector that I drew and it has an effect applied to it so I can move this vector and the effect will move with it. I'll zoom in a little bit as well so you can see. Now this might not be quite right at this stage but I can adjust it as I need to so it's a little bit too tall 
Um, I'm going to see if I can just shrink it down a touch here. So I'm just using the shift on my keyboard. So that's okay for now. Fantastic. So I've created some stairs on the side there. Uh, I might also put some stairs over this side. But what I need to do, I can copy and paste these stairs. But I actually need to change them so they go in a different direction. Now I can go back up to the um, window and appearance panel. We can have a look here. We'll double click on here and it'll show us what our extrude and bevel options were. Hit preview again. Uh, but instead this time I want the stairs to go in a different way. I want them to go uh, to this other side of the building. But you'll see if I go down here and I go isometric right, it's actually facing the wrong way. So there's a step that I need to do first. So I'm going to hit cancel because first what I want to do is actually flip these stairs. I'm actually going to just remove the 3D extruded bevel here by hitting the delete and it goes back to my vector that I had before. And I'm going to flip this. So I'm right mouse button clicking transform reflect. Okay. I'm going to pop them over here because this is where they will be eventually and go back to my effect extrude and bevel. And this time I would like to go to isometric right. Now there's some other options. I'll just drop that down so you can see there's some other options that you can have a play with as well with isometric, which is quite fun. This time I'll make them 30 and okay. Now this is where I want them to go just here on the side of my building. And you can sort of spend a bit of time nudging that around and getting it to line up properly. So I have this part of my building that I've created using the pen tool and these parts here that I've drawn in 2D but then made them 3D to my isometric grid using effect, extrude and bevel. There's one more step that I'd like to take with these steps so that I can actually make them the same colours of my drawing. At the moment they're a 2D vector that has been, an effect has been applied to and what I'd like to do is actually expand them. But a tip that I'll give you of something that I always like to do is actually just duplicate what you have before you expand it because once you've expanded it you can't step back and adjust things further. So I'm just going to hold down option and drag the, both of these stairs out so I have copies of them and then the ones that I have near my building I'm going to go to object expand appearance object expand appearance and you'll see how these have changed if I zoom in here each part of those stairs is now its own separate vector shape which means I can go in and change the color. So I'm going to do that by using my direct selection tool. I'm going to select and hold down shift, select all the top steps, make them my top color. I'm going to select holding down shift all of the front panels and change them to the uh, front color. And then the side will be this color. And again, over here, do the same thing. I've got my direct selection tool, select all the top parts of the steps. Now I will select the side of my steps and now I will select that front plate. Fantastic. And I'll zoom out so you can have a look. Great. So it's starting to come together. Now I have these steps. That one in particular looks quite funky, I reckon. And we have this one over the side. Now I might just show you how you can create a shape that will then turn into column using the same technique that we've just been looking at for the stairs. So to do that, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. Again, this time we'll be working in 2D and getting Adobe to turn it into a 3D isometric pattern for us. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag out a circle. And with that circle selected, going up to effect, 3D extrude and bevel. This time with preview selected, I'm going to go to isometric top. And you'll see when I hit OK that I now have also sitting on that same um, isometric axis a column that I can use. I'm just going to drop that down a little bit so it's a little bit thinner. And I can pop this also within my drawing. So there you go, there's some other things that you could create. And so rather than having to draw that out and create the gradient, which you could do, um, that's just another quick way of working it in Adobe Illustrator. There's one more thing I want to show you here, just how to create a sort of an arch doorway and we'll be using the Pathfinder panel for that. So I'm going to this time draw out an ellipse, might make it a little bit smaller. Using my direct selection tool I actually just want to take this one anchor point off the bottom and using my pen tool 
I'm going to, and holding down shift, I'm just going to draw out um, a square bottom for this kind of door window that I'm making. Now I'm going to use the extrude and bevel again this time, but I'm not going to give it any depth. So I have it selected. I'm going up to effect, 3D extrude and bevel. And again, I will go to the isometric left and preview. Actually, I might need isometric right. That's better. This time though, I want no extrude depth. So I'm taking that down to zero and I select OK. And you can see here now, it's taken my 2D shape. It's put it onto the correct axis of the isometric grid, uh, but it's still this 2D shape that has an effect applied. So I'll move it over here so you can see how that would look uh, sitting on the building. It's a little bit big again, so I'm just going to hold down shift and drop it down just a touch. Fantastic. So I'm pretty happy with that shape, um, but I'm going to now use the Pathfinder to create just a little bit of depth to it. So I need to expand that shape, but again, I always like to duplicate it just so I have a copy. I'm holding down Option key and I'm just going to drag off that door over to that side. Now with this one selected, again, I go to Object, Expand Appearance. And you see now I have that expanded appearance of the doorway and I'm going to click command copy, so command C and command F to paste it in front and I'm just kind of put it uh, about yay big. So what I have here is I have two shapes. I'll change the color of this just so you can see um, what I'm working on. Maybe I'll make it something completely different. Looks a little bit wild. Now what I want to do is I want to just lose that kind of outside bit there. So I'm going to use my Pathfinder for that. And this is my Pathfinder panel here. If you don't have it open uh, on the side, you can find it under Window, Pathfinder. Now I'm going to select both of those, holding down Shift and clicking both of them. And I want to remove just this edge. Uh, the one that I will use for that will be the Divide function. Anywhere where that overlaps will create a new shape and then I can just delete this shape that I don't want anymore. So I'm hitting divide. Now because I've used the Pathfinder, it's placed all of these shapes together in a group. So to access that group, I can just double click on it and go inside. And now I can delete that shape, which is the one that I don't want. And I'll double click to go back outside the group. And you can see here now, if I just zoom out, I've just created a sort of little rounded doorway for the building that I am working on. Now I could change that so that looks a little bit, you know, garish. Let's go and change that to one of the other colours in our scheme. And again, this one's not really part of it. So we'll select this. There we go. So as you see, can see, there's just a few things that we've worked on there. We've created some shapes using our pen tool. We've created some 2D shapes that we've then turned into 3D. And we can just sort of build up these buildings. You could just keep going and going and add all sorts of interesting things. But I hope you've enjoyed having a little bit of a look at how you can play with isometric grids and the type of things that you can create. Thanks for watching.